Hey everybody, welcome back to the Old Swedes Farm. It's Rich. Got Holly on the uh, camera for this one. So I gotta move around a little bit. There's no way I could do this and hold the camera in one hand. I wanted to show you some, people have been asking about what antennas would I use in an emergency? Whether it's stuff hitting the fan or just an emergency, tornado, whatever. How do I go out portable? Uh, how do I do emergency communications? Uh, out away from my house or at the house. I've got an old Impala, Chevy Impala. This is the Road Warrior that I've taken out portable. I brought out a couple of radios. The handheld that I showed in our last video, I'll put the link to the video at the very end of this one if you haven't seen that video. And then my Yesu FT991. This is the Road Warrior to go along with this. What you need for emergency communications, I mean, I, let me give you the obvious. You need a radio, you need power, and you need an antenna. Those three things, you know, along with a microphone, that's kind of uh, assumed, but a radio, a source of power, and an antenna, and you're good to go. Now, how do I power it? People were wondering, I've got a power cable and just two lugs, Hopefully you can see that. I mean, the positive and negative lug. Um, this is a fused line. I've got fused lines in case that battery in the car acts up. Um, the fuse will blow versus ruining my radio. Make sure your rig is protected. Make sure your radio is protected if you're going to hook it into your car battery. I literally, there's lugs on my car battery for plus and minus, and I hook that up responsibly. Do it the right way and I can run it uh, under the hood and sometimes if I'm in a hurry to get set up I'll literally run it uh, along the side of the window tape it there bring it in the back window and hook it into the radio it's it's that simple hook it into the the battery and this piece goes into the back of the radio I've got power I'm set one thing I mentioned that I didn't show on our last video is I keep talking about feed line feed line nothing more than coaxial cable um, it's got two ends that are like a PL 259 I believe um, this end or one end goes into the radio the other end goes into uh, the antenna simple hook it up you should be good to go um, but I was talking about feed line it's coaxial cable this is RG8 uh, actually this is RG8U but uh, you're looking for RG8 um, don't get the real, real cheap stuff. You're going to lose a lot of your signal uh, between the radio and the antenna. Get some good RG8 um, cable. It's 50 ohm cable. Hopefully that'll make sense. But if you're seeing things, if it's a 75 or whatever, use 50 ohm RG8 cable. Now they come in different lengths. You can get them at uh, DX Engineering. You can get them at many spots. Um, but a good set of uh, RG8 with PL259s on the end already installed. I buy them already installed. One end goes into the radio, one end goes into the antenna. I'm good to go. When I operate, I, this is not on the hood, obviously. Although I could operate out here with a chair and a table. It's usually on the dash and I'm mobile. I wanted to show you a couple other things for setting up antennas. Some things that I've done. One of them is this runover uh, pullover antenna support. It is nothing more than a, I think this is a 2 by 8 that I have taken a plumbing nipple and put a piece of heavy duty pipe with another nipple and another piece. This is about 2 feet tall of conduit, uh, piping, whatever, and I have bolted three bolts through here uh, through the other side. This is seriously heavy duty when I run my tire over it and the car's weight is on it, this is sturdy. It's so easy to bring a few of these mast sections along. These are five foot masts, um, smaller end, larger end. They fit right inside each other. Um, if I've got a small beam, you know, I was showing you this radio goes for about five miles with the five watts. If I'm up in a good spot, I can talk for five miles or so. But I can also take the antenna off, and there's a connector there. I could hook a connector uh, into that RG8 then, transition it to, to that, 
and I could get a small beam antenna. Small antenna, think of like a beam like your TV antenna at home. You know, it's sitting on the roof and you know, it points at the place you want to talk to. With a beam on the five watts, I can talk quite a bit more further because I'm pointing that antenna in a direction and saying I want all my signal to go that direction. I can put that beam antenna on here, add another five foot section, another five foot section. I could, you know, add several. It fits in there. It's mostly vertical. If I want to turn it, all I got to do is, it's called Armstrong rotation, but I uh, just turn the antenna, point the direction I want to talk. It's good. So something like this, simple. It's probably four feet long, um, a two by eight, four feet long. Got the pipe in uh, installed in it, run it over, I'm good to go. It's a quick support, it fits in the back of, in the trunk. These fit in the trunk, I'm good to go. So kind of idea number one, I could also put a larger wire antenna. And I'll show you one other thing. Um, something else, I've acquired a lot of supports. When I talked about a dipole antenna the last time we were uh, on the last video, you know, I talked about the center insulator, got the connector there you hook the feed line into that the other end goes to the radio then there's two wires that go out a certain length based on the frequency you want to talk on um, here let, let's walk out to it but um, the wire comes out to an insulator this is the end of the antenna don't point into the Sun um, the insulator and the rest of this I just tied it off to rope ran it to a tree I could put this antenna up, the center insulator up in a tree. Um, I could put it on the top of another pole. I've got a fiberglass mast. This is a, a fiberglass uh, center mast that uh, all I can do is open up one piece, slide it up in the air, lock it into place. There's many pieces that go up. This goes 40 feet in the air. Um, and I've got some ropes on it so then I can tie it off in four directions and secure it. I've literally got a piece of rebar pounded into the ground. This is just for temporary obviously, but a piece of rebar in the ground um, pounded in about a foot and uh, it's, it's electrical tape to it. That's how simple it could be. Um, this is very, very temporary. But could I put that wire antenna on there, hook the feed line and then hoist this in the air, tie it off? You bet. Um, this is probably not something I could take portable. Um, I could, but it would become semi-permanent. So if you can find something heavy-duty fiberglass, deployable, this thing is probably, I don't know, eight feet tall total. I can fit it in my car um, the long way, and uh, I can bring it. Or if you had a truck, it's easy. If you can find something like that, piece of cake, but to get a dipole antenna, and I could bring many of them up, many of them with me and depending on the time of day and the frequency I want to be on I could bring this down put the next antenna on deploy it um, or you could skip this bring some ropes throw the center insulator in a tree have the ropes on the other pieces and send them off to other trees so simple wire antenna this rolls up into a tiny roll it's probably two pounds it fits in my trunk plus the feed line so um, but just a different way to deploy it, this mast, which is very easy to use. Um, the last antenna, and the one that I use, why don't you come over here so you don't close line okay. yourself. Um, the one that I use the most, and I showed this off um, when I was talking on the last video, is the three magnet uh, base. It's an MFJ 336T. Um, it's got some protection on the bottom to keep from scratching the top of your car. One thing I'll say is these magnets are strong. When you're putting it down, watch where your fingers are. You can pinch your finger pretty darn good and have a good blood, uh, blood blister. Um, it will hurt like heck. These are strong magnets. Uh, they will let you put an antenna in here and drive at 80 miles an hour. Uh, <laughs> I would never do that, but uh, they have been proven. To work uh, up to that. I just want to show you how it works. Obviously the uh, the feed line is a smaller piece of feed line. Hooks in the bottom of the antenna. 
Uh, it's a vertical antenna, so part of it that's transmitting is the vertical piece, the magnets connect it to the metal of the car, and that is the ground piece, the other side of it, where this dipole has one piece going one way and one the other. This has a transmitting piece up, and the other piece of the wire is actually the, the magnet and how it makes a connection to the car. This is simple to do in that I find the middle of the roof, it's in place. And then this, I unwind, I can just open it, run it through here, the rubber gasket, run it to the radio, shut the car door, and plug it in the back. It's that simple. Now let me show you the, the pieces that make it vertical. And they're dependent on the frequency. There's different antennas. These, the whips for these antennas, uh, these MFJ whips, they're literally $20 each. So for, I've got a set for three different frequencies. It was $60, but if you only wanted one frequency, it's $20. It's really a good deal. Um, so this one's for 40 meters, which is seven megahertz, the 40 meter band. It also comes with a, a whip. Now I've got them just, they all kind of look, look the same. So I just put on there that it's the 40 meter whip. Um, just gonna make sure I put the right one in the right one. So 40 meters, and it's just a matter of uh, putting the, the whip extension in there. In there, you screw it into place, and that's the full antenna. Now I've got one for 20 meters, which is uh, the 14 megahertz band, uh, amateur radio band. Same thing, hook it up. Let me just uh, set these on the ground. They're about the same height, um, but as you can see, the, come on a little closer here so I don't, I don't clothesline myself. <laughs> um, the 20 meter mobile, what they are is trying to get that length of wire that is in a dipole, but they've wrapped it around the base and then there's some smaller wrapping. They want to be the right frequency. They want to be resonant. So it's, that's all the wire and then up into the whip. Now the 40 meter, which is a lower frequency and needs to be a longer antenna, you see how much more wire is in there wound around. These work great. Uh, let me just put the, uh, show you how easy it is to install one. You know, I've got the mag mount up there. If I wanted to change frequency, I just climb up on the, climb up on the car. Screw the whip into the base, and I'm ready to go. Um, it's that simple. If I wanted to change frequencies down to 40 meters, I would unscrew that, put this one in, and I'm good to go. Um, it's that simple. Do these work? I have used this mobile. There's a Minnesota, I'm a, I'm a contester, I'm a ham radio contester. There's weekend events where you try to contact as many people as possible. Uh, there's different competitions. One of them is the Minnesota competition in February and other people are trying to talk to Minnesota counties and their score is the number of contacts they make times the number of counties. So I've gone out mobile and operated from like 30 different counties uh, in one of the contests. Come on on the other side of this wire so you don't get... Um, the contest is 10 hours long and I've used that radio on the dash from about 30 counties over a 10 hour period with this antenna, with these antennas, and over a 10 hour period, one, one weekend or one 10 hour period, I made over 1,500 contacts in 10 hours. Do these work? Yes, they really do. These are gangbuster mobile antennas. Um, now with that base and the, the long wire dipole, I can't be out mobile. With this, where I have to run it over, I can't be out mobile. Can I go from point to point and set up? Yes. Um, if there were truly an emergency and I needed to communicate while being on the road, this is what I would take. My FT991 right into the battery. Um, I would bring these whip antennas. I've got three of them. Um, I have one for uh, 80 meters, which is 3.5 megahertz. I've got one for 40 meters seven megahertz and I've got one for 20 meters which is 14 megahertz. I'm also considering getting one for 21 megahertz and 28 megahertz. Um, but with these three antennas, 80, 40 and 20 meters, I can talk around my state, around the region, around the country, around the world. And I will do a video about 
different frequencies and propagation, uh, how radio works, how it bounces, how it works to talk to different regions. But I wanted to show you these mobile antennas, and there's a myriad of antennas you can have. There's some fit on your bumper, all that. These things, this has been road tested um, in many, many, actually I've operated in North Dakota, the North Dakota contest, South Dakota, Nebraska, Iowa, Wisconsin. Colorado. Uh, Colorado. I've used these antennas and made thousands of contacts over a 10 or 12 hour period. They work. So these little whip antennas. Um, I hope this made sense. There, there are a lot of antennas you could, you could take out, build, and operate from anywhere in an emergency situation. What I'm going to tell you again, uh, people have said you don't really need your license to get on the air. In an emergency, you know, we'll just turn on our radio and we'll be able to do it. According to the law, yes. If there's an emergency situation, you can take that radio that you've bought, you can plug it in and key that microphone and talk to whoever you want to. What I'm saying is get your license. If, you, if the first time that you key up that radio and your first bit of experience is keying it up in an emergency, I feel like you're going to be sadly uh, disappointed in your results. You're not going to know propagation. You're not going to know how to operate or etiquette, ham radio etiquette. You're not going to have tested your antennas. I don't think you are unless you're going to get on and kind of bootleg a little bit. No one's going to talk to you because you won't have a call sign. But I would encourage you to think about getting your license. It's not that hard. Then get your radio, get your antennas. If you're serious about emergency communications, test your antennas. Make sure I know these work. I have made thousands of contacts with them. Um, I know how to deploy this. I could get my radio, I could get it hooked into the battery, get the antennas out and be on the road probably in a half an hour uh, and have sandwiches and pop packed in the cooler and whatever. I, I would have my stuff. I know how to deploy it into uh, my cases, get everything going. I would urge you to get your license, it's not that hard, so you can get your supplies together, you can test them, find out about ham radio etiquette, find out about propagation, learn how everything works so you're not turning it on for the first time when maybe your life depends on it and you don't know how the buttons work or something like that. So there's my soapbox on that. If you get questions on other antennas, if you think I missed something, let me know. Um, trying to do these uh, kind of stuff hits the fan videos or emergency situation videos because uh, I've had a lot of requests for them. Um, I will link at the end of this the first video I did just about stuff hitting the fan and an overall on, on ham radio. I'm also going to put together a playlist, an amateur radio playlist on my channel if you want to watch all the ham radio uh, videos. Um, but I have some others in the works as well, talking about propagation and how the signals bounce, etc. I'm doing a Minnesota goodbye where you say, you keep talking, talking. Sorry about that. Uh, if you got uh, other ideas for, for videos, let me know. If you like this video, give it the thumbs up. I'd appreciate that. Uh, share it with others who might uh, be interested in emergency communications um, or ham radio themselves. If you got a question about ham radio, drop me a note. Love to help you get your ticket. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.